I recently returned from some days off in the Black Hills of South Dakota. Visitors there learn about westward expansion and roaming herds of millions of bison and the fall of the indigenous American Indian, more specifically the Lakota Sioux, the Cheyenne, and the Arikaras. Now think of our world today, hustle, bustle, internets, interstates, commerce, international relations, and try to visualize how today could exist if the Lakota had successfully defended against their cultural demise. As guilt-ridden as the history books spell it out with unfathomable atrocities against our native ancestors, I don't see any way it could have proceeded differently. That's progress. Have you noticed that whenever progress occurs, there seems to always be an aggrieved party? Europeans and their guns, horses, and smallpox arrived in the Americas and society as it had been previously defined was never the same. Initially, the guns and horses at least seemed to be beneficial progress for the Lakota Sioux. It, it gave them a terrific advantage over their Cheyenne enemies. And buggy whip manufacturers were severely hampered by the invention of the automobile. And the introduction decades ago of fuel injection on our new automobiles caused whole companies, Carter Carburetor for example, to downsize and lay off thousands. Change, it is said, is the only constant. Since my trip to the Black Hills, I've become a student of the Oglala chief, Red Cloud. Now, Red Cloud was a fierce warrior in his youth, an astute politician in middle age, and a statesman and ombudsman in later life. He was heavily involved in resistance as a warrior, taking part in numerous bloody battles with the U.S. military as it attempted to secure safe passage through the area's Oregon and Mormon trails. Now, at some point, Red Cloud knew that the forces in play were overwhelming and that his people's way of life was going to end. That was his Red Cloud moment. From that point on, he made it his life's work to see to it that the drama was minimized. He eventually accepted the path his people were inevitably going down. It seems Mr. Cloud was endowed with a great ability to resist the onslaught vigorously, even violently in his youth, until at some point, and it said that occurred on a sponsored visit to Washington, D.C. to powwow with the great white chief, he saw the data and began to carve a path through the inevitable that would yield the best outcome for him and his people. But he didn't start with that vision. Understand, Red Cloud had clearly killed many cavalrymen in his youth, and yet lived well into his 90s, so he was a smooth talker. My point is this, change is inevitable. Whether I term it progress or not, I may find myself disadvantaged by market change, politics, climate change, or any of a number of outside forces over which I have absolutely no control. How much energy I resist with and when, if it's called for, I pull the plug on that exercise is my Red Cloud moment. Red Cloud's biography gives a good roadmap of how to deal with it. A. He resisted, even violently in the early phases. B. He recognized the overwhelming inevitability of this change, or progress, was his red cloud moment. And C, he negotiated a path of least damage for he and his people. Did he win? No. Were his people disenfranchised and stuck on reservations forever? Yes. The ones who stood their ground and demanded the old way died suddenly and violently. This is the way humanity works. It's been going on for tens of thousands of years. And what happens when I miss a red cloud moment? Well, I've had a tendency to stay at the dance longer than has been in my best interest in my past. I think this comes from my knower-judger training of stick to it, suck it up, you can do it rules that I wrote for myself during my formative youth. I've hung on too long in dozens of cases throughout my life, projects, jobs, clients, relationships, missing those red cloud moments. Have you ever done that? Developing the ability to see the data and the change is inevitable when there are forces in play over which I have little or no impact allows me to be present and execute my personal red cloud moments. Moving on and adapting, it seems, may be the answer. Like it or not, that's progress. It's Kim, and this is another moment of clarity.